This is part one of a two-part series where we will be exploring the best dark rides around the world. For this one, we'll be looking at motion-based simulator attractions. This is typically a screen-based ride in which the vehicle stays in place but moves you around in some sort of way. They often have no practical effects and through the use of technology, make you feel like you are actually moving even though you are not. For this, we are focusing strictly on those rides that I have experienced. Because of that, I want to give a quick shout out to Flying Dreams at Ferrari land in Spain. This is one of those flying theater attractions that unfortunately I did not do. I actually did Racing Legends instead, which was terrible, and I was dumb for doing that, and I definitely should have done Flying Dreams, which might have made this video, but I did not experience it, but wanted to give a quick plug for it. And I do want to apologize in advance because unfortunately, because many of these parks do not allow filming on ride, I do not have on ride footage to show you for any of the attractions in this video, but I encourage you to go and watch POVs later on if you are unfamiliar familiar with the ride. That all being said, let's kick things off with Battle for Ire at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This used to be formerly Europe in the Air or the Soren knockoff, but they recently gave it the VR experience and they did a great job with world building where the general story is you are going to go help reclaim the heart of Ire that has been stolen and you're going to encounter fairies, dragons, lots of different creatures. And it's actually neat because if you choose not to wear the VR goggles, you still can't experience that because they do have a screen in place for those who might not want to do that. It's not a bad ride, but I wouldn't say it's spectacular either, but it was good enough to make this video. Coming up at number nine is a classic. It is Star Tours at the Disney parks. And what I love about this is that it's interchangeable. They have so many different plug and play experiences where each time you can go to a different world within the Star Wars universe. You're led by your guide C-3PO, and depending on which version you get, you could be going to a planet and encountering any character in the entire universe, whether it's from the original trilogy, prequel trilogy, or sequel trilogy. One of the highlights of my life was being pinpointed as the rebel spy and having my picture shown on the screen for every passenger to see. It was hilarious. At number eight, we have Despicable Me Minion Mayhem at the Universal Parks. And even though I personally prefer the Star Wars theme to the Despicable Me Minion theme, this is a bit more of a modern attraction. I really like the technology that they use for it. Plus, it's just a whole lot of fun. I love the characters from the movie. It's got a great cue, and it's one of those experiences that you get off and you just have a smile on your face because it's just a lot of fun. Great for everyone in the family. And number seven, I know people are going to give me some flack for this. I have raced through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. Why do I put this over Despicable Me? Well, not gonna lie, I'm a big fan of Jimmy Fallon in the Tonight Show. I think they did a great job embodying what his show is about, and I think the ride is actually better than people give it credit for. Yeah, it's goofy and ridiculous at times, but I think it's a fun little attraction. It's got a fantastic cue. If you're a fan of late night comedy and the history of the Tonight Show, you'll find it very entertaining, and it's great with the return times. You don't have to stand in a standby line, and I think Universal actually did a pretty nice job with this ride. Just barely missing the top five is a classic. It's Soren, specifically Soren over California as as opposed to Soren around the world. I have yet to actually experience the Soren at Epcot, so for this I am only referring to the Soren that is located at Disney's California Adventure. And this is what is considered the staple of the flying theaters. It's what inspired many others. And that's why it's only coming in at number six because even though it was the original, some rides have come around and actually done a better version of it. Like one of the common complaints you get with this ride is, oh, I can see the feet from the people above me, which is a valid concern and luckily some rides have fixed that, but you can't deny that this is a true classic and one of those can't miss rides at Disney's California Adventure. And number five is Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. And not gonna lie, this ride can be a hit or miss for a lot of people. What I like about it is it is very re-rideable because you have three different positions that you can ride in, with of course Pilot being the main one you want to get. And when you're flying the Millennium Falcon, it is a really awesome experience. Plus it has a phenomenal queue. I mean, you enter right outside the freaking Millennium Falcon for Pete's sake. I know a lot of people wish it had some other characters involved other than Hondo and Naka, but that is a great Hondo animatronic, you gotta admit. And Disney has said it's possible to swap out the animation with something else, so maybe one day we'll get more than one variation of the ride experience. And number four, we have the Volatarium at Europa Park. To me, the Volatarium feels like it has all the modern day upgrades that you wish Soren had, because it is a bit of a dated attraction. The Volatarium has the best visuals, spectacular technology behind it, and it even has those wonderful wonderful smells that you can experience as they're showing various scenes as you go throughout the ride. 
And taking the number three spot is a bit of an unconventional choice, but is actually Fuji Airways at Fuji Q Highland. And like the Volatarium, this is another flying theater. And it was really well done. I particularly loved this attraction because of the quirky theme, the fact that it sticks to Japan and Mount Fuji as the subject matter, and they even have a fun moment where they make you feel like the ride actually takes you upside down through a corkscrew-like element on a flying theater which obviously it doesn't, but it is so synced up and well done that it feels like you just went upside down. That one moment really stuck out to me and made me realize, okay, this is actually a really good ride. At the number two spot, we have Flight of Passage at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I am a big fan of this attraction. It just puts a smile on my face. I just feel happy and positive walking off of it. This is probably the most modern version of the Flying Theater, and it arguably does it the best. Pandora is one of my favorite theme park lands of all time, and this is their signature attraction. It takes you on a beautiful flight through Pandora. You actually feel the Banshee breathing through your linking chair. Plus, it's just such a cool experience. It's got a phenomenal queue line, and it's one of those rides that I wish I got a chance to ride more often. And maybe I would if it didn't always have a really long line. And taking the number one spot is a ride that you either love it or you hate it. I loved it. It's Darren Brown's Ghost Train at Thorpe Park. And I actually had a hard time deciding whether I consider this a simulator because it is so different. It is very weird. And I'm not going to be discussing any spoilers in this video. So this is really one of those things where you have to have written it to really understand what I'm getting at here. But in a lot of ways, it does feel like a simulator as opposed to a true traditional dark ride like the ones I'll be discussing in the next video. But this ride absolutely blew my mind when I wrote it. I did not know what to expect. I had not heard any spoilers. It absolutely scared the crap out of me and it left me floored. It was my favorite ride at Thorpe Park. All of the effects were working for me and I can understand if you have some technical issues that could really ruin the ride experience but if you get a good run on this thing man it is unbelievable it truly is like nothing else i have ever ridden in the entire world which is why i've put it at number one for my top 10 dark ride simulator list. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree with how I have ranked these attractions. And of course, stay tuned for the next video which will be discussing the top 15 dark rides in the world, whether screen-based or with practical effects, but follows a more traditional approach. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.